By popular demand, we're back at it again with the Youth Academies, and today we're releasing the best young gems Arsenal have to offer and sending them to the free agency. Whether it's their real life players that have bursted onto the scene or their fictional youth stars, something that started off as a humble concept, performed above and beyond expectations, and now here we are, a bona fide series. We're back in England today, we've done it with Manchester United, we tested it out with Schalke, a random youth academy. We're ready, we're here to cause some drama as we wave goodbye to all of the Emirates' future ballers as they're going to be forced to restart their careers. We're going to watch them play out, see what transfers they make, see where their careers end up. Could they become world-class superstars without Arsenal? Now, unfortunately, thanks to Arsenal's medium youth development, that is going to impact what starting pool of youth academy talent we start off with. Fictional-wise, we're not going to start off with too many. We're probably going to get a medium-sized batch. Nothing like in comparison to what we got with Schalke. Don't worry, Arsenal's real-life team are going to carry us because we've got so many real-life youth academy talent talents we're about to let loose. Now first of all let's check off with the automated stars we've got here in our youth academy and we've got the homegrown talent plus one two three four five six all together. Jack Jackson what happened there did his parents just give up on naming him like no points for creativity whatsoever. The homegrown talent with 79 to 94 potential four star skills four star weak foot five foot nine and as a cam slash center forward we're going to promote him to the senior team we're actually going to promote all these guys to the senior team. If we release them from here it's just going to delete them from the game so we need to actually release them from the squad hub. We've got Pierce Hennessy, the Northern Irish goalkeeper, 16 years of age, 55 overall. Yet another goalkeeper in between the sticks. This time, it's the American Matthew Watson. Godson Kuti, an African talent this time. The Nigerian is 42 overall, 47 to 63 potential. So I haven't got too much faith in him. Jason Cunningham. Well, what are with these Northern Irish talents? All of a sudden, the 15-year-old, the cam slash center mid, 49 overall. We'll see if their careers can go above and beyond expectations. We've got to wait to promote him. But the 17-year-old, Wassi, Ahmed from Saudi Arabia. The left winger will be promoted. We just have to wait a little bit longer for Jason Cunningham to join us. Let's start it off with a bang. We'll kick it off with the star of the show, Buki Osaka. Honestly, he's come out of nowhere and has transformed Arsenal's hopes. Been one of their best players this season. We'll be releasing him from his contract. He's no longer going to be an Arsenal player. And there he goes. Another one bites the dust. Off into the free agents. Next up in terms of real life candidates, we've got Emil Smith Rowe. Another exciting prospect that came at 19 years of age. He's had various loan spells out and now it's his time to shine at Arsenal with the team on the decline but no he's going to be in the free agency again thanks to PC mods we've got unlimited releasing. Up next it's the homegrown talent who has potential to be special Jack Jackson. The Englishman will be let go of and we're going to be controlling Arsenal just to make sure that they don't go ahead and repurchase these release players. We're calling back Ainsley Maitland Niles. I know he came up through their youth academy so we're going to take him back from West Brom and we'll release him onto the free agency the CDM slash right back. No potential status as he is 20 and one of the oldest players we're going to be focusing on throughout this video. We've got Eddie and Katia up next. Joe Willick is actually another player that we've got to call back. So many players out on loan, but we've got Reese Nelson, this little trio right here. The English are out in force right now as we go ahead and release him. Eddie and Katia is going to be put on the free agency again. And Joe Willick, who's been lighting it up for Newcastle as of late. Bolleran Balogun is just highlighting how many English youth prospects Arsenal have coming up through the ranks right now. And he's been killing it in Arsenal's second team. Recently signed a new contract at the club, but that is going to be ripped to shreds today. The young striker was looking to set things straight in his Arsenal career. I've heard a lot of hype about him, but he is going to be thrown out the door. Just like this Romanian wonder kid at 17 years of age, a teenager. I've never heard of him. Don't even really know how to pronounce his name. I'm going to call him Kurian for now. He has that special something. A lot of green flags opening up right there. So the Romanian, one of the only few foreign talents that Arsenal have to offer, will be releasing him. And it's Miguel Aziz up next. 17 year old, never really heard of him before this video, but we're going to be releasing him 17 years of age English and Arsenal Youth Academy gem that is going to be set out into the wild. And of course, the fictional one, the kids will be giving them a run for their money as well as we just straight up released every single automated player. This has been such a brutal releasing spree, but hey, that's our job. That's what we got to do. Just take a glance at the bargains available for every single club in world football right now. The Youth Academy has been put up to a free market and they are ready to be snapped up. They're looking for work. They're looking for jobs. Let's see what type of careers these young guns can make for themselves as we track them through the transfer hub. We've got every single player release listed here. And you know the drill. We're going to come back each season, revisit this, see what moves have gone down, see how their growth and development is progressing as we just sit back, relax, and let all the chaos unfold. Comment down below, have you say, what other youth academy should we be releasing? Subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get into it.
Now here is how the first transfer window has transpired. We haven't even gone a season deep yet. Here in the summer, moves have been made. Joe Willick, the 21-year-old Cam, he has been snapped up by Osasuna over in La Liga. He's packing his bags for Spain. It's quite a rarity. You don't see it often, that English talent move abroad or away from the UK. But here we go. He's taking a chance. But we have more transfer news to dig into as Emil Smith-Rowe has signed for La Viola. Fiorentina have security services and the young Englishman will be testing out his skills over in Italy. That is one exciting move, but one that also brings tears to my eyes. It's Bukio Saka joining the Bundesliga, and it's good to see a lot of them just venture out of England. I believe Reese Nelson actually played for Hoffenheim as well. Bukio Saka has been secured, and Hoffenheim have really got themselves a player, as Eddie and Katia will be helping out the relegated Schalke. If real life is anything to go by, the Royal Blues are in for a relegation dogfight, and they're going to need Eddie and Katia to fire on all cylinders. The non-English slash domestic trend continues here as Reese Nelson has ventured to Atletico Club Goianense. He's been bought on a free by the Brazilian outfit and he's going to be playing his football in South America. The Premier League and Championship clubs have been sleeping as Ainsley Maitland-Niles has made the move to La Liga just like Joe Willick as he has joined Cadiz. Newly promoted side in the top flight. I'm sure he's going to be a valuable asset to them. They've picked up a bargain and another La Liga export. It is going to be Jack Jackson. Probably with the least exotic name you'll ever hear as he ventures on over the struggling Valencia. We'll see how that goes. Is it a recipe for success or has he walked in on disaster? No one has made a move besides the top, top names and the homegrown talent. Aziz, Balagan, Chirian is still waiting for their big moves. They're the only real life players who haven't made the transfer yet. Here is the end of season one roundup and we've got one transfer to report on after December. In the new year, we've got Florian Balagan to Villarreal. Is that the best move for his career? I don't know, but it's yet another one of these Youth Academy Wonder Kids moving to Spain. And for some reason, the Spanish clubs just aren't messing around. Now let's go ahead and check out how they perform for their new clubs. Were they main starters? Did they fit in right away? Or are there going to be a few growing pains? Let's find out. Osasuna in Spain, La Liga. We're going to be visiting this country a lot. They finish in the lower to mid-range, 14th. Let's check on our boy, Joe Willick, and see how he performed this season. In terms of his squad ranking, he's kind of low at a 76 overall. There are much better players than him in the team. He's 21, still showing great potential, and he didn't get a minute out on the pitch. All I can say is that's very epic of you, Osasuna. Thank you for wasting my time. And one of our rare ventures away from Spain so far, we're checking in on Fiorentino who finished smack bang in the middle of the Serie A table. Coming through in 10th position, let's check in on our boy Emil Smith Rowe. Did he get a bit of game time? The formation doesn't really suit him whatsoever. That's got me kind of worried so far. 78 overall, still an exciting prospect at 20 years of age and the results don't get any better, do they? Maybe I'm going to have to go in and change up the team's tactical formation and considering that there is a 42 men squad, there is so much competition for him to do with. I've come in and Sir BCHD has applied a little finishing touches around the place. We've incorporated a cam in the formation. So hopefully in season two, we can get a bit more action on the pitch. Hoffenheim, you're up next. Let's take a look at the Bundesliga. A Schalke finish in 12th. We've got Hoffenheim at smack bang in 10th, just like Fiorentina. We've got two Arsenal Youth Academy boys out in Germany. And the first one we're going to check up on is Ibuki Osaka. I swear, if he's got no game time, this is just going to blow my mind. All right, he's at least got eight appearances, but a player of his stature and of his quality, he should definitely be getting more minutes under his belt, but in the game time he did get, he did score a goal and got himself two assists. Yeah, for some reason the Englishmen aren't really taken too kindly in these foreign countries. Schalke, Schalke, Schalke. At least they didn't get relegated. They've still remained in the German Bundesliga, and our boy Eddie and Katia has got to fight tooth and nail for a starting striker position. How many strikers do this club want? 22-year-old Englishman in royal blue has received a total of zero appearances. You know what? I've had enough. Let's get rid of most of the striker competition here. We are just going to release some players I mean, they've got way too many front men. Now, I want to say this might be our first and last trip to a team outside of Europe as we move to Brazil. Unfortunately, it fits into that category of a league that doesn't really follow the main European footballing calendar, so they're only about halfway through their season. But that's not going to stop us taking a look at our boy Reese Nelson, who made the jump to a nation that not many people would have. Here in the Brazilian, Assetti is still showing great potential, and he's yet to make an appearance. Is that because of the formation? No. I don't know what's going on here at Atletico Go, but yeah, things need to change. Now, the CPU going to continue to do our boys dirty. We're back in La Liga and this time Cadiz has been relegated as we have a free agent Ainsley Maitland-Niles who couldn't save them. Did he actually play a role in them trying to stay alive in this division? And yes he did. Finally one of the main wonder kids that have actually played this season. 23 appearances for Maitland-Niles and he got himself one assist. I don't know where they played him either from CDM or right back. At least we've got some good news to report on an Englishman succeeding outside of the UK. You love to see it. Valencia are up in a pretty mid-table spot after season 
season one, sitting in 11th. Let's see how the homegrown talent Jack Jackson performs here at the club. Let's take a look, and this is how he ranks. He's just one away from an 80 overall at 79, still has potential to be special, and because they don't accommodate for a cam slash center forward, the poor bloke got no game time. I'm sick and tired of the CPU, man. I'm gonna have to do their job for them. Nonetheless, we've incorporated him into the setup. Whether that makes a difference or not next season, I guess we'll have to find out. And staying in Spain, we move on to the Yellow Submarine Europa League winners, Villarreal, who finished up in fourth with 86 points, qualifying for the Champions League. Just have a sneaky suspicion that Balogun had no role to play in this. The Englishman, 19 years of age, still showing great potential, and yet he desperately needs a lone move away. You know what, Nino? You can go. It's time to go, Carlos Baca. You should have retired years ago. Jack Harper, I'm terminating your loan, and Jesus Ferreira, I know you're a career mode wonder kid, but get out of here. Maybe if he's the third choice striker next season, he might get a few minutes in off the bench as a super sub. I'm trying not to interfere too much, but at the same time, I kind of just don't want to keep checking in every season and seeing zeros across the board. The second summer transfer window is done and dusted. Let's take a look and see if any major moves took place, and it looks like things have stayed the same. Besides the young Romanian, Sirjan, he has made the move to CD Mirandes, who I believe is the second division Spanish side. The 18-year-old centimeter slash right wing. I'm looking forward to seeing what he will conjure up in the second tier, and there we go. I was right. As for the rest of them, we still have five free agents, one real life player, and four of the fictional Youth Academy stars. Let's hope season two is just a bit more successful than their first campaigns. Second season has now come to an end. Everything has remained the same so far as we continue to scroll. There are our best players. Now it's time to check up on each and every single one of them. Osasuna pretty much replicated season one's performances, finishing 13th, the lower to mid part of the table. Joe Willick, nowhere to be seen in the starting 11, so I haven't got my expectations set too high this season. The now 22-year-old, okay, he's actually played a bit. That is what we love to see. His performances this season read a little bit like this with 39 appearances. That is some key game time right there. 11 goals and 2 assists. So he's a goal scoring midfielder. And the Englishman is showing La Liga how it's done. He's in excellent form right about now. And they have actually slapped a 75.9 million pound release clause. They want to make some $75 million profit on their free agent. He's now climbed his way up to their about their fourth best player here in the team. Not a crucial first team member, but he's bumped his way up to important. Now that looks better. We've already seen some major progression already and we're only one player in. Next up, let's get in a Mill Smith Row update at Fiorentina. They've done one better than last season, finishing in ninth with 50 points. How much of an influence did the Englishman have on the team this season? Now with his cam roll at the club and he is now one of the 80 rated midfielders. He's kept the exciting prospect status at 21 years of age now. 40 appearances for La Viola in Serie A. We've got nine goals and three assists, 12 goal contributions. It's good to see he's outperforming some of his midfield competition like Castrovilli and Amrabat. Signs of improvement and development here as he is now valued at 42.5 million pounds. Let's see if we can keep this hot streak going of Youth Academy Wonder Kid performances as Hoffenheim finish in 10th. Schalke just below them in 11th. On first glance, Saka isn't in the starting 11, so that's already some worrying signs, but he has become the joint best player at the club alongside Daniel Mylan. He's now stepped up to a crucial first team role and that has earned him zero game time. Not on the right, not on the left, not even at left back. This is criminal behavior by the Germans. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. He's getting better though. He's up to an 84, a plus one for him this season. Now valued at 56.5 million pounds, but that is a major letdown. Hoffenheim do better. You know what? I'm going to even put him in the starting 11 myself. If you're not going to do it, I have to. It's the other blue team in Germany, the Royal Blues and Schalke now with Enketia leading the line up top alongside Uth. I wonder how that strike partnership performed this season. The Englishman now at a crucial first team role. So this is some promising signs. And there we go. After releasing all all that striker talent in excess. So BCHD's masterful moves have paid off here as Evil Eddie has earned himself 36 appearances, scoring 16 goals, 18 goal contributions for the young gun. And that's what happens when you play him, Schalke. You get results. He's in good form. Dark greens all over. 90 acceleration, 88 sprint speed, 82 finishing already. So some interesting dark greens forming as he is now valued at 25.5 million pounds on the transfer market. Detouring over to Brazil now. I don't really know what to make of this move because we can't really look at the club's performances. They're operating on a whole different calendar and Reese Nelson, we can't even check his full season stats. If that, he's not even playing. You're the best player at the club and they're not giving you any game time whatsoever. If that isn't a red flag, I don't know what is. It looks like Cadiz didn't really take their relegation too well. After they were demoted to the second tier, they completely wiped the floor, finishing on top with 108 points. Surely that signifies that Maitland-Niles had some part to play. If not, I'm going to be really heartbroken as he's not in the starting
starting 11. So 36 appearances, he only scored once and got an assist, but he's not really that type of player. I'm not expecting to see gargantuan output from the man. All that I know is he's the highest rated player at the club by a mile, doesn't really make the starting 11, so I don't know if he's coming off the bench. He's in bad form. It's another club trying to make a quick buck off their free agent purchase, slapping a 61.2 million pound release clause on the Englishman. Now at 24 years of age, he's approaching his prime. You'd think he might be snapped up by a bigger club, but let's see if he's ready to take on La Liga again. It's our penultimate pit stop here at Valencia, who have snuck into the top four, knocking out Villarreal, who is our next club we're going to visit. Jack Jackson, the homegrown talent. He could be in for some Champions League football next season. The change formation, brand new role and position. Let's see if he took his golden opportunity. And now, as an important first team player, he's in excellent form, still has potential to be special. What a turnaround. What a campaign. He has appeared 41 times for the club, scoring 17 and getting himself eight assists. We have on the cards yet another goal scorer and midfielder. He can also play at centre forward, so I'm sure a bit more of that uh, Trecortista role is coming out right now with 25 goal contributions. Those are some brilliant numbers for a 19 year old to be pumping out. 94 long pass and 90 short passing. It's some of his best stats right now. 93 agility is up there as well. Financially, this kid is worth 55 million pounds. However, the club have valued him at 194.8 million. That's his release clause and stated in his contract. And last but not least, the fifth place yellow submarines. It's Villarreal on the cards and you can already start to see Gerard Moreno is nowhere to be seen. They actually brought in a couple of new strikers like Macias the Mexican. We've got Neil Morpai from Brighton and that has left no hope for Balogun to get any game time at the young gun. Yeah, you can see there the 20 year old with only three appearances is simply not good enough. They're not showing any faith in the lad and they're just buying new strikers, getting in short term solutions whilst Florian is the long term plan. He could really be the key to their future success as again, these release clauses seem to be a trend. Onwards and upwards, I guess, to season three. For the first time since season one, we actually have some transfer news to report on here in the summer. We kick off this third campaign with Miguel Aziz, another player transferring over to Italy. This time it is Lazio. If you remember back in the day, Ravel Morrison actually moved there when he was a young upcoming English talent. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. So hopefully it is not the case here with Mr. Aziz. Smith throws the blueprint, mate. All you got to do is follow it. Manchester United had the nerve after the window was closed to do a deal for Buki Osaka. I believe he's release clause got activated from Hoffenheim, the man who was playing no games. Now, a 21-year-old, 85 overall, he's a perfect fit for the Red Devils, but I don't think he's made any Arsenal fans too happy. Still an exciting prospect. After selling Mason Greenwood to PSG, they needed a homegrown replacement and they've sourced it from the Bundesliga. The drama doesn't stop there for January as Matthew Watson has become one of the first automated talents to find a club. He's been signed by BVB. Borussia Dortmund have taken the chance on yet another American and the 20 year old goalkeeper will I assume be a backup or even third choice. I've got my fingers crossed for the American shot stopper. We're back at Joe Willick's Osasuna. They continue to be mid table, lower tier mediocrity. But how have they been treating our English youth star? Let's take a look as he is one of the best players at the club reaching the 80 overall, 23 years of age and he's gotten himself 39 appearances, 9 goals and 3 assists. So similar stats to what he put up in season 2. 12 goal contributions for the cam slash centre mid and he has been having a prosperous career so far, keeping the likes of Paulinho out the squad. It just shows a testament to how well he's holding down the midfield, performing well in a nation that not too many Brits tend to go to besides Gareth Bell in recent years. Fiorentina, probably the most consistent clubs we're going to come across in this video. La Viola finish in ninth again with 60 points this time around. Emil Smith-Rowe, has he taken over the Artemio Franchi? Let's find out as he's become the best player at the club, but grown up to an 82 overall. And the team's number eight, he is their franchise player with 40 appearances this season and he got himself 17 goal contributions, 11 goals and 6 assists in an advanced attacking position. He is thriving. He is conquering Italy. Now valued at 55.5 million pounds. Sticking with the Italian theme, we have progressed over to Lazio to find out how Aziz has gone in his first season in the capital. He's one of the lowest rated players here at the club. The Englishman still showing great potential. At 20 years of age, he's gone up to a 70 overall and hasn't received any game time whatsoever. And it's one of those cases where he just needs a lone move away to get some game time under his belt because he's going to be rotting away on the bench for years to come. Arrivederci Roma. That's right, we're back in Germany. The Bundesliga is calling and a player which I don't really expect too much from unless hits Berkey, unbehand Relika or retire. It is the American Watson who is actually a fifth choice goalkeeper at BVB. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I thought he was going to be third, but no, the American is still an exciting prospect at 20. He's got so much time ahead of him. From rival to rival, we go on to the Royal Blues and it's still in Ketia and Uth leading the lineup top. Let's see what they were capable of this season.
season, the English Finn, at 24 years of age, he's reached 80, and he could be entering the twilight years of his career as he racked up 36 appearances again, this time scoring 12 goals and getting himself 6 assists. The releasing strategy works, I think I'm going to go ahead with that now because it's got proven results and Ketia has become one of their main players to find the back of the net. He's in okay form, he could be looking a bit better, we're not going to complain as his financial valuation now lies at 92 million. Valencia slipped from a top 4 club in Spain, now down to 7th, no European football for them this season as Jack Jackson has hit an 83 overall, a plus 2 to his rating and he is ranked in the top 5 of players at the club. At 20 years of age, the number 28 is a crucial first team member, his stats are looking out of this world this season with 50 appearances, he has trounced every single midfield opposition with 19 goals and 9 assists, that is 28 goal contributions. Lovely stuff with an average match rating of 7.1, excellent form, he can't put a foot wrong, he's got the Midas touch, he's probably the one you've all been waiting for. Manchester United with Bukio Saka have finished in 3rd, Champions League spot, a pretty decent outing, first time back in the Premier League, let's see how he performed here at Old Trafford, he's earned himself an important squad role, still an exciting prospect, the versatile 21 year old has gotten 14 appearances, so not the best, but at least it's better than what he was racking up at Hoffenheim, you've got to start somewhere and I'm sure he's going to impress Ole at the will, valued at 71 million pounds, he looks like he is set for United dominance for at least the next 10 years, with Maitland Niles now becoming a seasoned right back here at Cadiz, he has experienced his second relegation for the club, as they couldn't keep themselves afloat and he couldn't keep them up, the outright best player on the roster, 79 overall, he's yet to hit the 80s, and at 25, he's approaching his prime, but this time he got himself 39 appearances in La Liga, unfortunately no goals or no assists to report on, so pretty depressing scenes right here, maybe his release scores will be activated like Saka, but he hasn't really tempted any clubs to be knocking on the door, I accidentally forgot to check up on our favourite Romanian last season, CD Mirandes has finished 19th in the second tier, so not the best, they're clearly doing it tough out there, but could the ex-Arsenal man save them, Kirjan, at 20 years of age, he's gone up to an exciting prospect, a really poor second division side, he's only garnered 16 appearances, no goals or no assists, I believe that's probably coming in off the bench, by the looks of things, it's a dead end club with no potential, as he's in bad form, just a pole on the negative energy, it's Spain, you just know they love their release clauses, and he's got a 10.2 million pound one in his contract, finally, last but not least, let's check in on Villarreal, the yellow submarines, to cap off season 3, it doesn't look like things are getting any better for Florian Balogun, to rub it in even more, they've purchased another striker, that's not doing any favours for Balogun's game time, as the stats this season, actually, when he got on the pitch, he proved himself, 2 goals and 2 assists, that was way more than I was expecting, he actually outperformed the Moroccan, guys, what is going on, maybe I'm just going to have to do the releasing tactic, this is getting out of hand, I've had enough, the 21 year old Balogun, he's ready, he's up for the challenge here in La Liga, I've made him the only striker here at the club, only time will tell as his value has creeped up to 7 million pounds, if you haven't watched the last releasing video, make sure you go check it out, because there was a certain someone that never got a club or never found work throughout the whole entire video, 10 years I believe, we've got a golden trio right here that is going to give Ethan Laird a run for his money, we've got the beast from the Middle East, Wasim Ahmed from Saudi Arabia, he's been flying under the radar just like the Northern Irish goalkeeper Prince Hennessy, and our lowest rated player who I really just had no hope for even when I signed him up through the Youth Academy, Godson Kuti. As for the rest of them, they've stayed put throughout the summer, no transfer dramas as we head straight into simulating Season 4. It's the end of Season 4 and we do have one more transfer to report on, don't exactly know when this took place, Here's Hennessy from Northern Ireland has made the switch to the first French club to feature in this video, Stad Rene. Our first pit stop is over in Spain's second tier where CD Mirandes continues to disappoint in 18th, there is no sign of promotion but our Romanian Sirian has he made his impact on the team, he's in the starting 11 playing at right wing so that's a good omen, here is how he's looking as an exciting prospect, 21 years of age, 72 overall, it's a plus 2 to his status this season and now he's a crucial first team member with 23 games with 1 goal and 1 assist, the main question is where is he playing, is he playing centrally or on the right wing, we don't know, we're just innocent bystanders as his valuation has gone up to 5.5 million pounds and that 10.2 million release clause still stands, let's dig a little deeper, did my Dortmund goalkeeper experiment pay off as they finished runners up in the league and it looks like it only angered the CPU as they went out and bought two goalkeepers that are better than Watson, Luigi Sepe and Dominic Livakovic, the American at 21, did he get any game time this season, no he didn't, you really do hate to see it but because goalkeeper is such a hard position to get that starting spot we're just gonna have to release them all, let's see how Dortmund do or if they go ahead and buy any more goalkeepers, I'm just here in Serie to confirm my suspicions that Aziz isn't getting any game time whatsoever, we'll find out, Lazio Maurizio Sarri proved me wrong as he's still showing great potential at 21, he could be doing 
wonders for lower league teams, but no, the Eagles have taken the chance and they haven't really given him a fair shot. I thought the striker problem at Schalke was bad. There are just way too many CMs here at Lazio. I think it's time for a clearance. That's a little better. Currently, SMS, Milinkovic, Savic, and Aziz are the only two central midfielders here at the club. That might provide him with a bit of an inkling away into the first team. We thought Watson had it tough at PvP, but we move on to our next goalkeeping situation. Hennessy, the Northern Irish, is sixth choice here at Stad Rene. No more so BCHD interference. I'll just let the simulation play out. Oh, Sasuna. It's the first time we've seen them in the top half of the La Liga table. Has that got anything to do with Joe Willick now hitting an 82 overall? The front running cam alongside Paulinho, his partner in crime, has racked up eight goals this season, 39 appearances, and he's keeping the Brazilian out of the starting 11. King shit right here. Although his assist game has suffered, I'm sure he has propelled Osasuna and his new valuation now standing at 43.5 million. Laviola have risen over in eighth place, gathering 60 points this season. It's a pretty familiar standing, and Emil Smith Rowe has been able to achieve maximum performance. He's able to play his best game, and he's still the highest rated player at the club. But now with a fellow countryman by his side, Fiki Odomori, they're focusing more on the foreign talent, and right here it's proven to be successful. 39 appearances, 9 goals and 3 assists, 12 goal contributions, which is what we've seen before. From one camp to another, it looks like Smith Rowe has really been put on that trajectory and that right career path to be one of the best players in this video. It's Eddie. Big Ed's Schalke have nearly been relegated, just like in real life. Two points, they have survived the drop. Him and Uth, what were they doing up front all season? Not banging in the goals, it looks like, as the crucial first team member is now 25, as in Ketia. He absolutely was dominating in comparison to the rest of the team. He needs to get out of here, man. He is carrying the club on his back. I'm surprised he doesn't need a check up at the physio after his 19 goals and two assists. This has been one of his best and most successful campaigns to date. Jack Jackson has been one of my favorite players to revisit every season and he's fired Valencia into a top four spot. European football is ready for the English homegrown talent and now he's currently standing at an 86 overall, rivaling the likes of Guedes and Gaia at the top of the tree. He's had the potential to be special since day one. Him alongside Smith Rowe are the future of English football. The club clearly rated him highly with that gargantuan release clause and now it's starting to make sense. With an 137.5 million pound valuation, he's already got a maxed out stat, 21 years of age and he's got 99 agility. He is starting to look like the complete player with 53 appearances. He's got 13 goals and 10 assists and it's the first time in his career and pretty much the first out of any of the other wonder kids we're tracking right now. Double figures in both departments. 13 goals, 10 assists, 23 goal contributions. He's really earning his money here in La Liga. Checking in on the young gun, Balagun, staying in Spain. Villarreal are up in six. So let's see. Oh, he's actually in the starting 11. Surely some positive signs right here. We made him the only striker at the club and they went out and bought Joaquin Correa and Mamor Nyang. Also got themselves involved with the Italian teenager, Gnotto. And it looks like our releasing player strategy has paid off a treat. It has worked 40 appearances for the 22 year old. Found the back of the net 11 times and earned himself an assist. The result are slowly but surely getting there. We might have had to interfere. We might have had to tell the CPU how to do their job. But hey, look at us. We're here. After one of his best performing campaigns, the club have given him a £45 million pound release clause. Runners up in the Premier League as Jonathan Ikorne currently in that right mid spot. Not the best of omens. Minimal growth for United's number seven. But is he falling under the United seven curse? We all know that shirt provides so much pressure. The expectation. Legends, but also flops have worn that shirt. I think Saka right about now is falling into that flops category if he doesn't turn his performances around. The manager doesn't give him game time. Only five appearances and two goals. Now valued at 95 million pounds, nearly approaching the 100 mil mark. Season five has come and gone, guys. A decade, half a decade down the line. Finally, we've got some transfer news to report on. Villarreal's Balagun has transferred to UD Almeria. I hope they're in the first division. It'd be pretty sad to see the Englishman take a step down after he carried them to a Europa League spot. And it's a similar situation with Miguel Aziz. He has gone from Lazio to Liverpool, moving back to the homeland, and how could he? How could he do the Arsenal like this? Just like at Lazio, he probably won't get any game time. Let's visit the new boys, the players that made a move this season, and at first up to kick things off, Udi Almeria with Balogun, and they have survived La Liga. With 36 points, that proves to be the magic number, but how many times did Balogun find the back of the net? He is the best striker here at the club. He played no parts in their survival campaign, but looks of things, it's Jordi Escobar who just stole all of the limelight. Not on my watch, Almeria. Area discarded. As predicted, there was nothing of note to report on here for Miguel Aziz at Liverpool. Sad times, really. I don't know why his agent keeps accepting these offers. I don't know what's worse, staying a free agent or keep going to all these big clubs and getting no game time. Stupid question. He's getting paid 52k a week, so he's 
secure in the bag nonetheless. Atletico go. We haven't taken a trip here in a while, and for good reason. Reese Nelson, he's the best player on the roster by far. He's continued to live the Brazilian life and stay in South America without getting game time. He could be doing the same thing in Europe like Aziz and be securing 52k a week, but instead, he's only getting 18. I don't know what the thought process behind this is. I don't know how he hasn't submitted a transfer request yet, but yeah, that's the Brazilian logic for you. Now you know why we haven't visited this team in a while. Now this man is slowly carving himself into Fiorentina folklore. Emil Smith Rowe now boosted up to an 87 overall and is by far the best talent here at the club. He's still got years ahead of him with 40 appearances, 8 goals and 11 assists. And for the first time in a while, his assists have outweighed his goals. Stuck to the regime now being valued at 93 million pounds. When you talk about spectacular spellbinding English cams, forget about Mason Mount, Jack Grealish who, I thought the bloke was Irish. Nevertheless, we have got not only Smith Rowe, but Jack Jackson. He has overtaken Smith Rowe in terms of overall. Standing at an 88, 22 years of age. He's younger, he's better, he's got a better haircut. The dreads speak for themselves, really. At the end of the day, he is a crucial first team member. Cam slash center forward, that can bag a goal. He can set one up. But most importantly, he's got the finishing touch. I think if there's any player in this video that have proven themselves Ballon d'Or worthy, mark my words, in the next two to three seasons, he could be nominated, financially valued at 167 million pounds. The club have given him a 477 mil release clause. I don't think anyone in their right mind is paying that. Now the loyalty displayed by Joe Willick right here. I'm in awe. He's stuck it out at Osasuna, finishing in 11th. The Englishman has no right to be staying at this club for so long, considering his caliber. But that's just how good of a dead set bloke he is. At an 84 overall, 25. The cam has been at the club since 2020. He's on track for his testimonial. He could well and truly do a job in the middle of the park with 40 appearances, 5 goals and 4 assists. Imagine what kind of production he could achieve in, let's say, a Valencia or a Real Madrid. The possibilities are limitless now. With a 53 million pound valuation, he's got an 100 million release clause on him. The last Youth Academy baller we're checking up on is Buki Osaka. He's in the starting 11. However, has not grown one bit. He is stuck at an 87. Now at 23, he's starting to merge out of his wonder kid years. And this is the season he's exploded onto the scene. It's his breakout campaign with 64 appearances. I think he's played every single game in every competition. 11 goals and 8 assists. Definitely following in the footsteps of previous number 7s if he keeps this up. We haven't seen big money being spent for these Arsenal Youth Academy wonder kids so far. But halfway through season of six. It's the January winter transfer window and goodness gracious me, on deadline day, Manchester United toppled the charts by signing Fiorentina's Emil Smith Rowe. It was finally time for him to transition back to England. He developed his career, transformed into a world-class superstar and Laviola finally cashed in on him, getting back an 155.2 million pound profit. That is how you do business, ladies and gentlemen. But no, the transfer news doesn't end there as Joe Willick has finally ended his spell at Osasuna. Now the 26 year old approaching his prime has moved to the Bundesliga. Dortmund have picked him up for 74.4 million pounds and that's not the first time they've appeared in this video. Hold up, trader alert, we have just seen a transfer that has evaded us. It's flown under the radar, Eddie Nketiah. He's only gone and joined the old enemy. Now we thought Aziz did Arsenal dirty by joining Liverpool. Big Ed has done a complete 180 and joined Spurs. He's gone to White Hart Lane. Now the 26 year old is joining the other side of North London in the peak of his powers. He's finally departed Schalke and Spurs paid the money for him, now valued at 45.5 million pounds. That transfer move has definitely thrown a spatter in the works and come straight out of left field. The beast from the Middle East, Wasim Ahmed. Unfortunately, the Saudi Arabian has yet to find a club after six years and he joins Godson Kuti. It's funny how clearly it spurs and Ketia is playing second fiddle to Tammy Abraham, who has outperformed him, outscored him, got more minutes than him as he's only appeared 11 times for the club and scored one goal. Was it really the right career choice? Throwing all your morals out the window and any chances of winning silverware. Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. Udi Almeria, now one of my favorite clubs to check in on now that Balogun has joined. They've got a really interesting squad building as Balogun is now within the top four. He's earned that crucial first team role there, number nine at an 80 overall. And this time he has outperformed and outscored Escobar. 43 appearances, 16 goals and five assists to keep them alive and afloat and becoming a La Liga staple. 21 goal contributions for the Englishman abroad. He's in excellent form and the man has impressed at the right club. He got away from Villarreal. Valued at 42.5 million pounds, I'm sure there is a move on the horizon. Poor stuff from Dortmund, finishing in fourth BVB now with the Arsenal Youth Academy double. They've spent big money on Joe Willick, and at an 85 overall, he is the second best cam at the club, as Oscar seems to be ahead in the pecking order as we take a look, and you can see right there for yourself, no game time. He's been sat on the bench thanks to the Spanish playmaker, and even Jude Bellingham can't get a game. Not shaping up to be the best move so far, Joe.
though, is he's now valued at 63.5 million pounds. What on earth has gone down in La Liga this season? I think I've just broken career mode. This is what happens when you go too far into the game. I'm only six seasons in, and a 76 game campaign has taken place. Unless some drastic rule changes have happened at the Spanish FA, I'm severely worried about what's transpired right here as Real Madrid take home the title. Never mind, that just means Jack Jackson got so much more game time under his belt. In a 38 game season, this would have been impossible as he is now the highest rated player at Valencia. He has earned that title. He's one of the world's best in excellent form, which is what you'd expect from the number 28. And that 78 campaign season hasn't really reflected in the squad hub. It might just be a visual glitch. I'm not quite sure, but 13 goals and 13 assists, 26 goal contributions in 48 appearances. The homegrown talent has successfully transitioned into a bona fide world renowned superstar. And I'm sure he's not stopping anytime soon. A brand new 99 stat to report on short passing has been maxed out. And his valuation now stands at 162.5 million with a 477 mil release clause as the icing on top of the cake. Still stranded in the depths of La Liga Smart Bank. For some reason, our Romanian friend over here, Cirjan, has received some boosts in an extreme amount right here. He still has had something special at 23 years of age. He's a crucial first team member, but he doesn't really get the game time like a crucial first team member would. With 19 appearances, he scored four goals and two assists. It might be time to move on, mate. Just give it up. I doubt he's got much of a future left at this club. If they're treating one of their best players like this, it's not going to go down well. He deserves better. Now valued at 46.5 million pounds. These Spanish clubs just have a boner for release clauses, man. I don't know what to tell you. Despite Manchester United purchasing some of the best English talent available on the market, they still fail to win the league. Uh, that is some depressing signs right there as we take a look at Emil Smith Rowe at his brand new club in a new shirt. Damn, he looks good in red. Just not Arsenal red. He's a brand new red devil. And this season, he got himself 37 appearances back in the Premier League with six goals to go with it. Not the ideal beginning to a campaign, but you got to start somewhere. After years away from the homeland, he's got to readjust to life in the Prem. He's nearly reaching that 100 million pound valuation. Now, in Saka's case, he is just capped at an 87 so far. For two years in a row, he has just stayed the same. No increase, no downgrades. This could be the side effects of Manchester United's number seven. 59 appearances, seven goals and three assists, 10 goal contributions. Financially, Arsenal's former young gun is now valued at 82.5 mil. You know what, guys? We're going to go for one last hurrah. I want to simulate a season just to see if these two guys are going to be free agents forever. Can Jack Jackson realistically be in with a shot to win the Ballon d'Or? And what are the major transfers that are going to happen? Is Reese Nelson finally going to move out of Brazil? So many storylines to follow and unfold. So let's see exactly what goes down in Season 7. It looks like we're in for a drama-filled Season 7 finale as the transfer window has gone down. In the summer, some big money's been spent as Valencia brought out the checkbook for Buki Osaka, poaching Manchester United's number 7, and they were just happy to let him go. This means that two of the players we've been tracking down this whole video are reuniting. And that, of course, means Jack Jackson will be playing with Saka alongside him in the starting 11. I'm sure Valencia are going to be one hell of a European threat this season. What an exciting move that is, but here is the signing we were all waiting for for so many years. Reese Nelson finally escapes the clutches of Atletico Go, leaves Brazil, and is packing his bags for Europe. This time, it's our first league on transfer we've reported on so far. OGC Nice have paid an upwards fee of £55.4 million for the 26-year-old services. Clearly, the free agency is where Kuti and Ahmed belong, unfortunately. Imagine what these two are going to get done on the pitch. What are they going to create? It is going to be some magical football down at Valencia. A Wonder Kid duo to end all Wonder Kid duos. Now, I guess the only thing that Season 7 is failing to deliver upon is the Ballon d'Or front, as the top four nominees are Joao Felix, Paulo Dybala, Mbappe and Haaland. No sign of Jack Jackson whatsoever. That's one thing that has definitely disappointed me, because he's probably going to become one of the best English players of all time. The homegrown talent has made it into the England starting 11. The national team set up his calling his name. Another career progression that has taken place. We've been waiting so long for this one to happen. Finally, the Romanian gets his break. It is Catalin Kirian from the lower divisions of Spain. He has now reached the heights of Napoli. The Romanian will now be playing his football at the Diego Armando Maradona. Now, if it isn't the snake himself, not even on the transfer history, the fee not reported anywhere. He couldn't handle the heat in the kitchen at Spurs and he has departed. Probably handed in a transfer request. Eddie and Ketia. I'm sure Arsenal fans lost a lot of respect for you a long time ago in this video. But he had offers from not only Juventus, which he ended up joining, but Lille over in France. He ended up securing the bag over in Turin and is now playing over in Serie A, just like Chirian. Here's where the experiment leaves us right here at the end of Season 7. We've actually gone seven years without either Godson Kuti or Wasim Ahmed being picked up by any club in the world. That comes as a pretty big shock to me as we've seen players like Eddie Nketiah hop around different clubs for fun. We've seen loyal icons 
Williams like Ainsley Maitland Niles as soon as he set foot in Cadiz he has stayed loyal and I'm sure he's adored by the Spanish outfit we've seen Balogun hop from Spanish club to Spanish club and found his footing away from the UK just like Buki Osaka and Jack Jackson a homegrown talent of gargantuan proportions now at a 92 overall still at only 24 his ceiling is way high I'm expecting him if we continue this maybe to go around to a 95 or a 96 two desperate moves we've been waiting on for so long both Kirian and Nelson have made their way back into Europe's top class and Emil Smith Rowe from Fiorentina to Manchester United he's had an absolutely stellar career and just like Joseph Willick and also soon a man at heart he has changed allegiances only in recent years players like Watson and Aziz joined big clubs but they just didn't get any time on the pitch no Ballon d'Ors between this group but I'm sure plenty of silverware goals assists and a rapid growth most of them share that in common besides the free agents it has been one roller coaster ride you guys seem to love this series so make sure you smack a like on the video down below this takes me so long to record considering I got to swap clubs I got to check on the stats each and every season for the players it's a really tedious process and can only be possible on PC so if you're new around here subscribe and let me know down in the comments below what youth academy should we release next follow me on all my socials the links are in the description and as always I've been your boy Sir BCHD. I'll catch you all in the very next video